Hey everyone, Bob here, KD4BMG. I need to solder a barrel connector to the end of a custom cable to go between one of my QRP rigs and my 100 watt amplifier. So I thought we would come out into the workshop today and introduce you to some new tools that are gonna show up on the channel from time to time. First up is the Yiwa 995D soldering slash rework station. And then the Kaiwitz Smart Digital Multimeter KM601. How did I end up with a 995D? The longer I'm in ham radio, the more I realize that a tool like this is very helpful when I go to make custom cables or when I need to heat shrink some tubing on top of a wire, a radio, etc. You do realize this is not a rework tool. This is a heat shrink tubing activator tool. That's what that is. The things that attracted me to this one in specific is size. This is a very small main unit. My hand covers the entire unit on the side. It's small. It's beefy enough that I won't move around on the workstation, but it is lightweight. The home that I live in is small. At my shack, I do not have space for this workstation, and my shack is within the living space of my home, so I wouldn't do soldering there anyway. So I need to break this kit down when I'm done using it and put it away, which leads me to some of the other reasons why I purchased it. Both cables will disconnect and reconnect onto the front of the unit. They are not hardwired. That was important to me to be able to package this up compactly and put it away for the brief time that it ends up in storage. These two cables cannot be put together incorrectly. They are pinned in such a way that you cannot mistakenly put the heat shrink tubing activator tool into the wrong connector on the main body. So it's foolproof. So while I'm not at the point where I could say to you, gee, you need to go buy this one if you're in the market for it, do your own research. These are just highly, highly rated on Amazon, a lot of positive feedback. They're reasonably priced. I'll go ahead and put my link in the description below if you want to purchase this. Of course, you have hundreds of options that you could go after. I'll let you know more in the future after I've used this a number of times if I'm still as happy with it as I anticipate that I will be. The KM601 is my multimeter of choice. I will do a full review on it in the future. Today, I just wanna introduce you to it. This is a smart multimeter in that it does some things for you automatically. It automatically senses whether you're trying to measure volts, ohms, or continuity. It actually tells you where to plug your wires into based on what you select or what it senses. It comes with its own case. It comes with an actual user's manual, very in-depth, well-written user's manual. Okay, so if you need help, if these things are not automatic to you when you pick up a multimeter, you don't immediately intuitively know what to do, this one will tell you what to do. It comes with very good instructions. There is no defect on the screen. You're just seeing a reflection of some wire shelving that sits directly above where I have it placed on the workbench. Pay attention to the two lights down here when I turn on the multimeter. They're basically guiding less experienced users where to place the probes. And now it's in auto sensing mode where it is going to automatically measure volts, ohms, or continuity depending on how I use it. I have a six foot cable I picked up on Amazon with two six pin DIN connectors that will insert into the back of my XPA125B amplifier. I need to solder to one of those ends, this barrel connector, so I can insert it into my QRP rig. To make sure that I can have rock steady hands and nerves during that entire process, I'm going to consume as much black coffee and caffeine as possible in the next hour. That's about half. So we have six wires in here, and I need to figure out wire two, three, and six. So that's what we're going to use the multimeter for. We're going to check continuity to find pins two, three, and six, and the corresponding color of wire.
I've done some pre-work to keep the video at a reasonable length. Those of you who know what you're doing have already moved on. Those of you who are interested, you're, you're still here because you don't know quite how to do this yet and this will be helpful to you. I have six pins here in this six pin DIN connector. I only need pin two, pin three, and pin six to connect to my XPA125B. I've grabbed the three wires that I need. How did I know that those are the three wires that I need? I did a continuity test. This is where the multimeter comes in. Let me show you. So let's get our multimeter turned on. It's telling us where to connect our probes. We will comply. Now, when you have continuity, basically your, uh, there could be multiple ways that your multimeter would signal it to you. In our case, we're going to get a audible and a visual indicator. So green, I'm just going to touch green wire. I'm touching the wire. There's no voltage going through this. There is no danger here. Always know what you're touching when you're grabbing a hold of wires. Now I need to find pin six. I could touch every one of these pins. And as soon as I hit pin six up here, it's going to give me an audible sound and you'll see the visual representation on the screen. Let me go ahead and touch it real quick. There's pin six. Let me touch a pin that is not pin six. All right, I am touching another pin. There is no indicator that there is continuity because there is not. I'm touching a pin that is not the green wire. Touch the green wire, touch pin six. And there's my indicator that the green wire and pin six are identified. Let's touch the yellow wire. And I know that the yellow wire is over here at pin three. And as soon as I touch pin three, it gives me the indication that I'm on pin three. Okay. Now the salmon colored wire, that is pin number two. I can touch every other pin in here and I'll get nothing. There I am on pin two. And of course I'm moving all over it. I can't stay steady. Coffee. There I'm on pin two. Audible and visual alert that I'm on the pin. That's what we want to see. All right, so I have two, three, and six identified in the six pin DIN connector. It's yellow, green, and salmon. On my barrel adapter, I need salmon on the tip, yellow in the middle, and green at the back end. How do we figure that out? So how do I know where to solder the wires on my barrel adapter? You can see that there were three places here that I could solder a wire to on the back side of this barrel adapter. Each one of these three terminals, so to speak, corresponds to one of the three areas on the barrel connector. So now we just need to find the continuity here. Which section of the front part of the barrel connector corresponds to the back? All right, there we found the ground. Let's find the tip. Touch the tip. Touch the probe on the left. Touch the tip. There it is, it's on the left. All right, let's touch the middle. Touch the right in the back. And there's our continuity. So this tool is telling me exactly what color wire goes where. The tip is salmon. The yellow middle will go to the right side of the barrel adapter and the green or ground will go to the rear or the large portion of this barrel adapter in the back. Now let's solder. Let's see how quickly the 995D heats up as an on off switch in the back. Then you have a power switch for the rework station slash heat shrink tubing activator tool. And then we have an on off switch for the soldering iron. Soldering iron automatically heating up we have it switched over to Fahrenheit rather than Celsius. For those of you that really know what you're doing, make a recommendation in the comments below what would be the perfect temperature for soldering this small of a gauge of wire. I would be interested in knowing your opinion. 
And then our rework station sits in bypass until you pick it up. And when you pick it up, it automatically activates and heats up. We'll see how well that works on our heat shrink tubing. And then when you place it back in the cradle, it automatically begins to cool down. Really great features of this kit. You soldering experts out there, I do welcome mocking in the comments below. Let's get a little pre-tin on the tip of the soldering iron. And let's see what we can pull off here. Well, that was quite simple. My dad's a general contractor. Growing up, I have soldered hundreds and thousands of uh, copper tube pipe joints, but I have not done much soldering in electronics. We want to get our wire hot. Okay, well, it was all a little easier than I was expecting. I have some flux off to the side. That's what you're seeing right now. Not bad. Back in the cradle. Okay, so why do we do this? We, we pre-tin the wire, so when we go to connect them to the barrel connector, uh, it, it just works better. People that do this all the time will tell you, you're going to pre-tin your connector, you're going to pre-tin your wire, and then when you go to connect them, things just work much better. Also, I have to trim these wires a little bit, and when I go to trim them, they trim much better when they have been pre-soldered or pre-tinned. Next up, we're going to pre-tin our connector. All right. Okay, we're pre-tinned. I think we'll go ahead and solder the ground on, and then we don't have to worry about that moving any longer. So right now the solder is melting. I don't know if you can see that or not. And what's on the wire is joining with what was in the terminal. Wire number two. And for wire number three, I have a good bit of solder on the top side of that terminal and we're going to try to heat that up and solder the wire right onto that. Let's solder left-handed. That ought to go well. It can't go any worse. All right, too long. Let's trim that wire. And again, that's why we pre-tin, because everything just goes together. Okay, we have three wires soldered.
air quotes. Up next, let's get the back end of this barrel connector screwed on. Okay, and now let's just heat shrink that because that's only going to give us an added layer of protection and strength to that. So let's try out this rework tool slash heat shrink tubing activator. Automatically turns on and heats up. Let's see how well it shrinks our tubing. We're already at the maximum temperature. Wow. First time I've ever used one of these in love. That works fantastic. Where have you been? Back on the stand begins an immediate cool down. Look at how well that worked. Fantastic. I think it's safe to say we learned three things today. First, don't send your cables to HOA ham for custom soldering. Apparently soldering half inch and three quarter inch copper tubing in residential construction is nothing like making custom cables. That's not the first time I made uh, custom cables, but it is the first time I worked with that small uh, pin connector, barrel connector, and admittedly, I have a long way to go there. So I hope that you are as entertained as I was frustrated. Secondly, the Kai Wheats KM601 is an awesome multimeter. It's good for experienced users. It has all the capabilities and features you would need as an advanced user, but it's simple enough for beginners. It has several automated features and comes with an excellent informed instruction manual. And last but not least, the Yiwa 995D appears to be a great soldering station and this heat tube shrinking activator gun, what an awesome job it did. I'm not ready to give this the HOA ham seal of approval. I've only used it one time. All indicators are that I'm going to be very happy with this in the long run. More on that to come as I continue to use it and practice doing my custom cables. I hope you enjoyed this friend. I hope it was helpful. I wanted to introduce you to some new kit in the shack 73. Talk to you soon.